things differently than a lot of people might if you've got a supportive family that is going to pay for your college and maybe help you with like money while you're there uh, so you don't have to work you know uh, you just you cannot um, you cannot let that opportunity pass you by for a free education you would have to choose something and just get the degree um, you know, I said in one of those answer videos that if I could go back in time, I would be a lawyer today. I think that's what I wish I would have done. Now, I don't have massive regret over it because my life turned out pretty good, but I know my my passion, that's what my passion was. I Now, I didn't know it then, and that's why I don't think I really worked hard to pursue it. I, I was kind of lost as a kid. I didn't really know what I wanted to do when I went. When I was in high school, I said I wanted to be a doctor, like in all the questionnaires and stuff, or I would tell my parents that that's what I wanted to be, was a doctor. But after I got out of school, I went to college for one semester, and I realized quickly that I could not do, I could not do schooling. I just could not continue anymore. I wanted to make money, and I was so poor, and I was starting to... Uh, do things. I got in trouble in college for stealing, um, and uh, because I was poor, you know, and, and I just, I knew that if, if I didn't start making money, if I didn't go to work, I was, I was going to get myself in trouble because I was struggling bad, and to survive, I did what I felt I had to do, and it it was the stupidest thing, but luckily I I just didn't get in trouble with the police. You know, I they it was something that I did that the college knew that I did, but they couldn't prove it. And so they basically said, either leave or we're gonna dig deeper. And I just chose to leave. So you know, that was tw I was twenty years old, maybe nineteen or twenty, nineteen years old at the time, and it's just a bad, bad, bad mistake I made. Again, it could have turned out even worse if I would have chose to stay and fight it and got caught or, you know, got in trouble with the police rather than the college. It could have been way worse. So, um, that was a situation where, again, I have regret, you know, not so much that I was going to leave anyway whether I got in trouble or not. I was not going to stay. I knew I had to go. I knew that I had to go to work. So this part might not be relevant to a lot of people, but I do feel like, because I know the state of the world, I think most people are, are struggling. I, I would say that there's more people listening to this that that need need financial security rather than people listening to this that are have all the money they can stand. Um, if you are one of those people that have all the money you can stand, can you please become a channel member of mine and, and support me? <laughs> but um, if if not, um, if, if if you if you are one of those people, then this part's not going to be relevant. Maybe it'll still be relaxing to you. But I do feel like work ethic is something that I have that is a one that is. In the one percent, I feel like I have a one percent work ethic, meaning that I am in the top one percent of top work ethic havers. I have an amazing work ethic where I care about my work, like I want to do a good job, and I dedicate my life to um, to a fault. When I was younger, because I was a workaholic, I I would work about eighty hours a week when I was in the car business. Because I wanted to be the best, I want, and I didn't. I wanted to, in my heart, when I went home at night and laid my head on my pillow, I wanted to be able to say to myself, "Did you do everything possible to get ahead today?" And every night I laid down, I felt like, "Yes, I did. I did everything I could." That's how hard I worked. That I, I would ask myself the question to be forced to answer it, and yes, I can. 99% of the time, I could say yes. I did not, I, after about, um, probably when I was 25, 26, maybe 20, 
27, I stopped taking vacations even because, um, one, they just cost a lot of money, and two, they, um, I started realizing that every place that I went, the people that lived there were leaving to go somewhere else, and I just, I could not get that thought out of my head that the people that lived in the place that I was going were leaving it to go somewhere else to travel <laughs> on vacation and um, I also realized when I would get back like like vacations were supposed to be relaxing and so like I would leave um, but then when I would come back my work would just pile up and I would come back to play and catch up and then what really what did I have to show for that vacation but maybe a couple of pictures and a cup and a few memories but like on airplanes and you know now travel is so cumbersome with you you got to go through security and take your shoes off and have everything x-rayed and just the hassle and the weights and the, the just sitting on a plane and waiting for the tube to get you, get you to where you're going and then you're sleeping in hotel beds that you know hundreds or if not thousands of people have slept in and you know it it's just so much of a vacation is the work. There's a lot of work that goes into it for the few moments, like when you're laying on a beach, drinking a, you know, a cocktail, or reading a book, or, you know, whatever you're doing that is the moment that you were waiting for for the vacation. Those are limited in the experiences. And then I also think that, like with the internet, like you can see so much now. So if you wanted to like look at the pyramids, if you went to Egypt to look at the pyramids, I hear like there's a McDonald's and a pizza hut like right behind them. Like you're looking at the front view, but in the, if you turned around, you would see like a pizza hut or a McDonald's, like that type. Like it's really kind of like, um, it's, it's, um, like commercialized. And then if you're going to look at a museum in person, but like you, you can't possibly go through like what the documentaries do online where they take you through all this, the caverns that are in there and you can see way more online than you can than actually be in there and I think that the internet has, you know, it's changed our lives in so many ways but yet people have not stopped that part and so like I've, I've watched those documentaries and I've looked into so much of the pyramid stuff that I feel like if I ever got there and I looked at them I would be like yep there they are <laughs> now what you know and so that part and again that's that may just be me I, I'm not criticizing anybody that loves travel uh, but just for me that's that's what it became it, it became more of a chore and um so I stopped doing that because that also was thousands of dollars a year that I could save and get myself to this place I'm in today because you're either going to work for one or two types of companies. Like if you work for a government, you'll get a pension, but very few companies have pensions anymore. You have to put in money. You have to save money. So it's like, like, it's like, so think about it this way. When you're young, you pile up this money. And when you're old, you live off that pile. And, and that's what I feel you have to do. It is what you have to do. If you don't, if you're not going to get a pension now, if you're going to go to the military or if you're going to work for the government somehow, you'll actually get a pension. So like if you work 30 years, they'll pay you $3,000 a month for the rest of your life. My best friend from high school retired from the military and he gets a check for $4,000 every month and he has lifetime health care and he never has to work again and he doesn't work. Um, where I did it the harder way, I think it's the harder way where I had to pile up money and I, I could technically access that money now but I would pay a hefty penalty. So once I'm 55, I can access that money and start living on it. And then I can withdraw like $4,000 a month or $5,000 a month and live off of it and never have to work again. But until then, I, I still need income. I still need money. And I'm still putting money into those accounts. 
so um, that's, that's just what you have to do and it's so much more difficult I think than people imagine and definitely probably more difficult than you're thinking if you're young like if you're in your 20s or something you may be thinking eh, I'll get it figured out think about this for a second money doubles every seven years so hypothetically if I give you if I invested a thousand dollars today in seven years that thousand dollars if I do nothing but put it in the normal markets in a normal type of account that is just following like the S&P um, it will have, it will be worth seven thousand dollars in seven years so that's why it's so critical to start when you're young because imagine have an additional seven years it's not that big of a deal if you're starting with the thousand and thinking seven thousand okay but then the next seven years it's fourteen thousand the next seven years it's twenty eight thousand the next seven years it's i can't do the math of my 56 yeah fifty six thousand the next year it's 112 and then imagine if you had another seven years you see it's the last seven years that's going to make the difference and it's when you start that makes a difference so and again it hits 55 now your social security like you really shouldn't hit that until you're 65 so imagine having to work till you're 65 i couldn't and that was part of the problem for me i felt like i sacrificed so much of my youth that i had to retire early to make it worth while because i i said to myself i knew i had to have the money to, to be happy it, w it was a necessary ingredient to ensure my happiness and ensure my peace and um so the trade-off is that if i was going to work like hell for 30 years basically that i would be able to stop early and and that's what I was able to do. I left my job when I was, I retired from my main career um, in, in March of 2019. So I would have been um, 48. I was, oh, I'm sorry, no, I would have been 46. I was 46 or 47, I can't, I'm 50, I turned 50 in September of 22, so. You guys can do the math on your head. I was either 46 or 47. But um, at any rate, that's when I was able to actually leave that job and then get into real estate, which I was just, I didn't need much money to live on because I pretty much already got the pile where it needs to be. But I knew I would do something for income to last me from 47 to 55. So basically that eight years of time and that's what I'm doing is just real estate now sometimes I'm busy and sometimes I'm not um, but that's what I did and I know how hard it was I know like I had moments where I was like this isn't gonna work but I'm telling you you'll get you'll get down in moments but you just have to stay strong you just have to know that it just followed the recipe and it will happen you just have to keep going you have to show up every day and you have to do it again now if you reach yourself being extremely miserable and I did through many different jobs um, you have to go you can upgrade every single time I left a job I went to a job and made more money and I was scared to death but I did it I took the chance and every time I made more money even when I didn't I was going to I just knew I had to do something different or work for a different store or you know something I made those changes and they always every single one of them paid off it doesn't mean every one will for you but you just move right to the next one you can keep you can keep progressing and you will make improvements and you will get better and if you're working that hard and you're working harder than the other workers that you're competing against you're gonna stand out and I think hard work does prevail over everything having that work ethic and just that focus and commitment that's what employers want and there's another saying it says big boats need deep water so like you don't want to go to a really tiny company because they probably don't have that much money but if you work for um, a bigger corporation they have more money
money, more positions, more room for advancement. So, like for me, I worked for Toyota because it was a big company and they were the number one car company. Um, that's what I, that's who I chose to work for. I could have went to work for any of the other manufacturers, but I chose Toyota because they were the biggest. Um, and it took me a while to get there. I didn't start with Toyota, so I started with like a really small store in a very small town. And it was awful, and I thought that's what the business was going to be. But after two years, I said, I can't take this anymore, and I just thought I'm going to switch to a different store. It was a different brand, but uh, I switched to a different store, and it was a totally different world. And that's I left that job to go to Toyota, so that's kind of the process that took me to my final job, where I worked 20 years at that one last job. Um, and I retired on my 20 year anniversary, but anyway, that's, that's what I did. Um, so when it comes to your work, be focused, be the best, be a hard worker, take extra shifts, because also when you're at work, you're not going to be getting in trouble, <laughs> you know, it's, and you're going to be making money and then you just have to do the right things. And, um, people are going to want you to like, spend the money on other things and you're just gonna have to like luxury brands like name brands like Louis Vuitton and stuff I've never engaged in that I always just I knew what things were on name only I never wanted luxury like I don't drive a Lexus I drive a Toyota you know I just didn't care I didn't care about those status symbols I cared what I thought I didn't care what other people thought I might have when I was really really young but it didn't take me long to get that out of my system to where I just wanted myself to be happy. I didn't care what other people thought of me. Um, so that was, that's another key. I would say don't, don't get caught up in what other people think because what other people think, most, first of all, they're probably not even thinking about you because everybody's thinking about themselves. Now, you might, you know, you might hear somebody make fun or something like that, but let them, it's the old saying, haters gonna hate, right? <laughs> so let them hate, it's, it, it, in the end you will win, because I can promise you a lot of the people that may look down on me, like when I was trying to make, when I was trying to pay my house off, I drove this 200,000 mile car for like seven years, and people are always like, man, you could, you're making better money, why are you driving this thing? And I'm like, well, because I'm paying my house off, well, why are you paying? off it nobody pays their house off I'm like exactly <laughs> I want to I want to get out of debt you know I don't want to have payments I don't want to I want to own what I have I don't you know someone told me one time you want to know who owns your car quit paying your payment and you'll find out real quick who owns it I always had a car payment and after that I thought he's right I don't even own my damn car so yeah, I just, the same with my house. You want to find out who owns your house, stop paying your payment, stop paying your rent. You'll find out real quick who owns your house. A lot of, like, the financial gurus say don't buy a house, like uh, Grant Cardone and even um, Andrew Tate says don't buy a house. And it's horrible advice, horrible. And, and they just say it because why they don't, well, of course, they own them, their own have a company owns it that they own the company and then they rent it from the company and they they don't really go into like the financial side of why they say that because likely if you want jets and you want ferraris my financial advice isn't for you because i obviously don't have them now i think i probably could have if i wanted them i could have worked another 20 years and i could have got that stuff in fact i could buy a ferrari today if i wanted one but i don't want one i'd rather have the financial I'd rather have the money and have that money growing and knowing that I'm going to be able to live off that than I would have the Ferrari today and drive around for a while. And then I'd be worried about it getting scratched and, you know, tires for a Ferrari are like 10000 bucks. I mean, it's just like everything is so expensive for those cars, you know when it's time to put brakes on them or even an oil change is probably 500 bucks versus 100 or versus 50 bucks for a Toyota. So whenever I leave the house, I, um, 
I have nice cars. If I want to drive one, I drive one. I have a really nice car, a Land of Toyota Land Cruiser, and then I have a, I traded my Prius in on a Venza. I have a Toyota Venza, which is a, a hybrid. It's a 22, 2022 Toyota Venza. And that's what I drive, you know, and I drive the Venza almost every single day. I very rarely drive the Land Cruiser. In fact, I drove it just the other day just to make sure it was dark as it stays parked in the garage, but it's kind of like my trophy from leaving my Toyota job. Um, one other video I'm going to make um, is a video on um, a house tour because it's the only comment I haven't got to. It's the only unanswered comment I have. Somebody asked for a house tour, so I'm going to do a house tour sometime within the next week and just kind of show you uh, around here because all you get to see is this one room. So uh, anyway, but I'm going to end on the financial advice now um, and then the overall advice. But I know I didn't get into a lot of topics, but I think maybe if in the comments you guys want some um, additional, like if there's anything you wanted me to focus on, uh, please let me know. And I can, I, I think this is a big topic. There's so much to discuss. Um, so, plus Max is starting to get noisy. Here's what he sounds like. <laughs> it's horrible. He, he, and the sad thing is, he mainly does this at night, and I, like, try to wait him out, but it's it's 11.49 here. I'm like, I do, I, I film this late, but he's, he just stays up till I go to bed, so there's nothing I can do. I've tried waiting him out. It just doesn't help, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video tonight. I appreciate you listening. If you like this, please subscribe to my channel, and please give me a thumbs up, and thank you so much.